Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm out here on the property and what I wanted to talk about was a little bit about where this came from, how it came to be in, in our possession, and uh, more about what, we, what we're going to do with it, with the plans we have for it, and uh, kind of get into some of the mindset of why we want to do some of these things. Uh, so to start with, if you rewind uh, a couple generations at least, my wife's family was here in Maine and they were doing uh, timber. They were in the timber business. They had a sawmill and one of the things that they would do, in fact it was very common for people in the timber industry in Maine to do, was to buy a piece of property, take the, the timber off of it, and then sell that timber, you know, saw it into boards, sell that, and then they would actually make enough to cover the, the cost of the property and turn a profit after their, all their expenses from harvesting the timber. Um, that was just the way the economy was back then. Um, I, now, I, I don't even know. The, the regulations have changed so that you couldn't do it quite the way they did it back then. Uh, you'd have to get lumber inspectors and a whole bunch of other stuff involved. But anyway, that's not my point. Um, generations go by, and as when, when uh, one of my wife's grandparents passed away, this, amongst a whole bunch of other properties that were uh, in the family, were sent out as an inheritance, and that's how we came to own this piece. And uh, I'm gonna be honest; it's it's a little closer to. Um, civilization than I might like, but I am still out in the woods and it is still not a bad spot. Uh, we do have a lot of advantages living in this area, uh, namely in a large and fairly close-knit extended family and a pretty good uh, community church group. Uh, you know, over the years we've, I've developed even a lot of friends and connections to my work. Um, so, I think we're going to be staying in this area for quite a while, and during that time, we're going to be doing stuff to develop this property, and I've, I think I've mentioned this a little bit before, we're trying to do stuff in a way that is not just sustainable, but I almost can't even say regenerative out here because it's so beautiful and, and just natural. Um, it is, you can tell by a lot of these trees, fairly young growth, for the most part. Um, but in this, this plot of land, I want to have the ability to supply not just our, our housing, but our, our food needs, and not all of it per se, though we could. Um, I don't necessarily think that is the best goal to have because well, I'll get into that later um, I want to be able to supply a lot of our other needs like tools like um, well I'm gonna get into talking about some of the communication stuff I want to do with amateur radio um, and I want this to be a fun place that you can go and you could actually go camping and feel like you're as my daughter calls it real camping and not just going out in the backyard because well the backyard if you will feels like going on an adventure uh, so with that said let's head on back home I will show you the pay-per-view and tell you all about some of the stuff we have planned all right catch you there there we go just look at the lovely view of that paper okay uh, getting oriented here, and before I get started, assume that this is completely inaccurate and not at all to scale. So, we have north up here, uh, there's a road over here to the west, and we have running through the, uh, through the middle here, we have a seasonal creek, which is something of a blessing and a curse because then all of this is uh, surrounding area is protected waterlands which would make this inaccessible to vehicles except for this one feature here 
So this right here, this brown line, is the old logging road, which I've been clearing out. <coughs> and uh, I, I did try to make the trees somewhat representative. So over here we have a lot of a lot of pines, a little bit of hardwoods, and then it gets smaller. We have small, dense pines through here, and right around that creek we have a semi-open area where we have a lot of marsh grasses and and uh, some of that being shaded out by some trees. And you come through here and we get a lot of these very small um, uh, we have some beech trees, some birch trees, some maples, um, maybe some oaks, but they're all very thin and very tall. Uh, which actually is going to play a really great role as materials for this right here, but we'll get into that in a minute. And then moving up here off to the east, we have the crest of this, this hill here. And if you're standing right here, this is almost flat. Um, off here at the property's edge, you guys have probably seen in a couple of videos, there's a field that is out here. That's where that those shots were taken from. Great view. Um, which I do want because I have a lot of these um, not very useful tiny pines that are just packed in so tight that a lot of them are actually dead because they couldn't get enough sunlight. Um, so I want to take this, I want to start clearing some of this out. There are some native blueberries along that trail or that, that old logging road. I'm hoping that with these pines, if I can clear those out, um, maybe just drop some of the branches and do a few burn piles to get rid of some of that, uh, we can really have the effect of encouraging some of that, uh, those blueberries there just by opening that up. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the first project, if you come back down here by the road that I'm going to be doing, the first project is I have this big stack of pallets, this little uh, veritable pallet wood forest of stuff I've been salvaging for quite a while. And then this structure, this little structure here is not yet there. That's going to be, um, have you ever seen those uh, garage tents? It's going to be a, a homebrew version of that. And got my plans right here. So if we look at that, we can see I've got it on logs and I have underneath it some sandbags and then probably paver stones to get it up off the ground so it won't rot. I'll, I'll be doing more, probably scorch the logs so that they don't rot as well. And I may change this, but each one of these supports here is going to be one of these tall spindly trees and we're going to cut that bend it in and then connect them and I have this uh, really really nice heavy duty PVC tarp that's going to go over all of that that was a, a great find a buddy of mine kind of clued me into the, the opportunity to pick that up for stupid cheap um, the floor here is going to be pallet wood and I even think I could probably get away with a single pallet wide uh, shelf up here as you walk in. So you have storage overhead. We'll see if we want to put that there or maybe on the other side. I, I haven't put it on the other side because I may put some kind of a heating system, like a tiny wood stove, in there. We shall see. Uh, oh, that's just some computation on how, uh, how high I need it to be and we'll see if this actually works out. I'm not sure this this four foot wide pallet might spread that out and that might end up looking a little more um, a little more shallow right here. We'll see what that ends up looking like when we get it up there. Um, logs are spaced at such an interval that we have one pallet width and then another pallet width. I'm going to take the boards off of those hardwood pallets and then so if my pallets are running this way, my boards will be going across. So we're going to have a really strong floor because those are, um, I have enough hardwood pallets 
that I can get away with doing that entire thing in hardwood is going to be pretty darn cool. All right, back to the map. Moving further inward, this feature right here is, is just really cool. It's, um, it's part of that logging road that is grandfathered in, so I would not be able to build this. But because it was existing, it's okay, it can stay, and it's this really beautiful stone culvert that, uh, you know, I've talked to uh, one of the guys, one of the uncles in the, the previous generation that had worked this and, you know, worked it with his father, so my wife's grandfather, and this was there before before he had ever been out there. It was It was already old by then, so I don't know how long that's been there, but it's been a long time. It's really cool. Um, like I said, I can't do a whole lot. I need to do some research into seeing what I can do as far as um, selectively taking out vegetation and maybe putting in some stuff, but I, having not looked into what I can do in a protected wetland, I gather it's not a whole lot. So I'm going to hold off on making any big plans there. Up here, uh, I know I talked about the blueberries up here and using this as a, uh, a supply. In in here, I know my kids are after me. They want a really cool tree house. We'll probably end up putting at least one down here that's easily accessible. And then maybe another one up here. And I want to do some kind of an amateur radio shack up here that uh, would, would really be a little bit more than a lean-to. I'm, I'm thinking right now of like a, a log framed A-frame that's up off the ground. We'll see. Oh, that big pine tree that I first told you about. That is right here. And come to find out, it's got a cool name. That's called a wolf pine. So that's all the way back here on the back side of the property. Again, assume this is all inaccurate as all get out. It might be more down this way than that way. I couldn't tell you. Um, but that will give you an idea. Uh, eventually, what I would like to do up here, because I, this is really the only um, flat-ish ground with good solar exposure that I have. Um, well, that I have that has a bunch of stuff on there that I don't mind getting rid of, namely a bunch of tiny pine trees. Um, down here I have a bunch of old, uh, not old growth, but mature pines that could be harvested to uh, to build with. And long term, I would love to put a garage down here, partly because that's um, it's close to the road. I wouldn't have. Uh, the problems with getting that, you know, plowing that out, and then partly because that's where power is. If I were to run power all the way out here, it'd be very expensive. So, you know, I talk about an amateur radio shack, I would probably orient one side of that uh, southward, and then if I, I would love to get some solar panels and put on the uh, south-facing side of that, and put it somewhere where I could put at least a small tower up and kind of get my signal above the trees and out to the surrounding areas. Um, you guys saw from the view there, I have a good shot to a lot of different places uh, with VHF, UHF being line of sight. I think I can do some uh, pretty cool contacts from there. Um, oh yeah, I would love to do some orchard stuff up here as well. So some parts being um, blueberries, some parts being orchard, maybe spacing those out to where I could have blueberries in between the trees. I don't know. I need to look into what sort of uh, what sort of plants gild together well with the trees that I'm looking at. And I would love somewhere on here, maybe, maybe down here as something of a uh, a natural hedge to have some really thick uh, raspberries. One, because, well, I like raspberries. Two, that is a natural habitat for some of the rabbits. We have uh, snowshoe hare, 
and there's a New England cottontail, which is actually endangered in this area. So it would be pretty cool to have some of those guys on the property. Um, I know there are rabbits out here. I've seen a few of them in this area, but they're not very common. Would love to see more. Um, somewhere in here, we have a campsite set up, and I would like to do more with developing that into maybe a spot that has like a yurt. It'd be really cool there. Um, it would be out of the way enough that once you're back in there, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, uh, but not so far away that you. Um, would really feel like uh, you're completely disconnected um, unless you wanted to feel that way <laughs> uh, if that makes any sense you you wouldn't it wouldn't be too much of an obstacle to get groceries and such back here especially when I have all this cleared right now right now the logging road is clear about to right there I still have this section and that section to clear before I can get the adventure wagon all the way back there but I've got quite a bit of that clear. Now, to be fair, this needed some clearing, and then this needed some clearing. I do need to go in here and beat back some of these little tiny pine trees, because uh, they, they do they do get scratches and, and sap all over the side of the van when I take it back there. And I haven't done anything with right here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do there, but I want to do something cool. Somewhere on this property... I want to have bees. Um, I want to start taking, maybe when I start taking some of these trees out, I'll replace them with a tree called a basswood tree. It's also known as a linden tree. And my grandfather, um, my mom's side, was a beekeeper, and he would always set aside this really dark, amazing tasting uh, linden honey. And I would love to have some of that on there. Um, oh! And one other thing that I will be posting a video about, I just picked up a forge. It's wood-fired, it's um, hand crank, so I can put it anywhere, I can put it all the way back here if I wanted to, I don't need um, electricity to run the thing. I think initially I will probably put it up here, but we shall see. Okay, that about covers it. Um, again, some of it is very long-term, like the garage. I don't know if I'll ever have the resources to do that. Uh, but that that tent there for uh, temporary tool storage, that's going to be coming up this uh, spring, maybe, maybe summer. We'll see, but that's going to be coming up this next year. And clearing out some of that, I actually needed to get on that pretty soon. Um, I'm kind of waiting. Uh, we've got, right now we're in the sort of the freeze thaw cycle where you'll get a good thaw and everything melts and everything turns muddy and then everything freezes again and you might even get more snow on top of that uh, but it'll form a layer of ice so I really can't get back there right now um, without a lot of effort it's really not worth it and I'd probably end up tearing up the logging road so I need to wait until that settles down um, oh there's a couple of spots, uh, particularly this corner right here, that I know I need to fill in and um, kind of solidify that up. I'm going to show you a cool technique of uh, using wood chips to shore up a uh, camp road like this. So that's what you have to look forward to. That's a brief overview of the property and various things that we've got going on here. Um, I have other daydreams. I'd love to throw in a pond, probably somewhere out in here. But that's neither here nor there because I don't have the funds or tools or resources to do that right now. So I'm going to keep rocking with what I can do with what I have. All right. So get out there, enjoy nature, and y'all take care of each other, all right?